Hi everyone. Uh, good day. Uh, I'm Shrey Lunkar. I manage the value PMS strategy at Motilal Loswal AMC. Um, I'm um, just to give you an idea of what has been happening over the last three months. Uh, obviously, the markets and India as a country and citizens of India got faced with this COVID wave two challenge, which was uh, unpredictable, and uh, it came with 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 its suddenness and the shock that it gave us, which was very similar to wave one. Uh, the only good part that this time what it was was that uh, wave one really lasted for about four five months, but wave two was a very Sharp rise in cases and a sharp fall in cases, so that made sure that the duration uh, through which the COVID lasted was much much smaller than wave one, and which is the only redeeming factor. However, having said that, the extent of damage uh, that was done in this limited time frame was a, was a lot more um, on a time weighted basis. Given that this was not just an urban problem, it, it went into rural India as well this time around. And uh, that's what made things a little complicated. Uh, but I'm just glad that as I speak to you now, um, most part of the country, uh, COVID seems to be behind us. And in a way, uh, just to bring a positive angle on the behavioral side, also is what COVID wave one, wave two has done is uh, it's taken out the vaccine hesitancy which many of us would have had before, uh, and it just. Made us uh, believe that vaccine is the only way forward for most of us uh, to protect ourselves from wave three, if there has to be one. Um, uh, so um, moving on um, broadly uh, from a portfolio standpoint, um, obviously wave two was unpredictable, uh, and yes, about seventy-five percent of the portfolio's earnings would be broadly resilient through this process. Uh, because they were either in the right side of the demand cycle or right side of the inventory cycle. Um, however, there is that 20-25 percent of the portfolio which will be impacted, which would be largely the the allocation in the auto sector and largely the allocation in the discretionary consumption sector, uh, which will get affected. Uh, but we again, as I told you, the the redeeming factor, the most redeeming factor of wave two was the duration of this wave two was much smaller, and that's what made it very convenient for us. Uh, second of all, uh, uh, you know, broadly from a portfolio stack-up perspective, uh, just to give you a quick vitals, uh, the portfolio has uh, the portfolio is delivering about an ROE of 19%. Uh, even in the year FY21, which was supposedly a watershed year thanks to COVID, uh, the portfolio earnings has done remarkably well, much better than our expectations. When we started the year, we were we thought we would, the portfolio earnings would decline by five to seven percent. But we ended the year with almost 25% plus earnings growth, even in current year, which is extremely heartening, and uh, we feel very good about that. Um, however, uh, so the portfolio is a very high ROE portfolio uh, today. Just to lay it out, the portfolio is about 28 times price to earning on FY21 basis. Uh, it's giving you an ROE of close to 18 to 19 percent, and we believe this portfolio will give you earnings growth upwards of 20% to 25% over the next two years as well. Uh, and thus we remain confident that there will be an absolute compounding which will happen given that the portfolio is pegged at 1.5 PEG. Uh, it seems broadly very reasonable compared to the markets today. And uh, we feel that uh, the portfolio shall continue to deliver the promise of absolute return. Uh, broadly talking about a few stock calls that we would have made, uh, you know, we, we added a stock called uh, Home First, which is a, a affordable housing finance play. Um, it was a new IPO and, it, you know, the IPO wasn't successful. And typically we find these kind of events uh, extremely thrilling, given that the expectations are low and margin of safety becomes very high. And that gives us an opportunity to add this, portfolio, this name to the portfolio. Uh, we believe this business can continue to compound at thirty percent, and it remains ex re very, very reasonably priced uh, for the kind of growth it can offer over the next three to four years. Uh, and it's extremely uh, uh, competent management along with that. Um, the second thing is obviously we've added more to LNT. Um, we believe that uh, the government is the rich richest ever that we've seen in the last uh, twelve to twenty-four months. 
um, there is a lot of unspent money and there is a lot of desire to stimulate the economy post covid wave too um and the best way to do it is uh dial up the execution of the infrastructure projects and which we believe can land up benefiting lnd and it continues to remain extremely incentive priced again so broadly these are the two uh changes broader changes bigger changes that we've done in this um so far uh, broadly from a thematic basis you may want to think about it that we are actually reducing allocations to mid cap and small cap booking profits because you know there are stocks which we multiplied money four five times we are taking money on those names and uh, we are allocating more towards larger cap names uh, with that um, i i hope uh, you all will continue to remain safe and keep your guard high and get yourself vaccinated soon thank you very much